You know what? I'm just, gonna, I'm, just, I'm just gonna play as a silent. Silent ascension level 16 because, uh, you know, we know we can win as a silent. You know, all we need is, you know, like three poison cards and apparently that's all you need for a silent deck in order to win it. So we're just gonna play as a silent and, uh, and win. Because that's what happens. Give me my... Deadly poison. Give me my poison stab. I dare you, game. I dare you. Another silent victory. Give it to me. I'll take a dagger spray, though. I mean, we need to add in cards. Dagger spray is not too bad. In fact, a dagger spray would have killed the Laos on turn one, which is kind of nice. Silent best girl. <laughs> I do like the silent, the poison decks, the thing I like about them is that they're easy, you know? All you need is a couple of different poison cards and then you can just make the deck work. I will take a cloak and dagger because we need to add in something. Give me the relic. Pen nib. I don't think Pednib is what we're looking for, but maybe, maybe. We remove a curse to add a curse. <laughs> oh boy, we got the K. All right, let's go this path. Gremlin knob. You ain't got nothing on me, boy. Would love something that makes you vulnerable. Uh, we might not be able to make him weak, but I'll add the heel hook anyways. We might be able to draw neutralize now. Unfortunate. I think we're probably just gonna die on the Gremlin Knob here. Freaking Knobber Boy. That Shiv deck is looking at you from the distance. Ah, I should have done Pendant better. Uh, there's no way we can make a Shiv deck work here. Probably just gonna die. Yep, we're dead. Okay, well, you know. <laughs> okay, I think I got that out of my system. Let's go back to the Ironclad. <laughs> oh, I got you with the old debate. Ice cream immediately. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting decision there, game. Ice cream immediately. In theory. We need to make sure that we are not playing cards we don't need to play. Like right now, why play a strike? We could have played a strike, but what if we wait? And then maybe what if in the future we can draw a bash and then we can bash strike strike and get more value out of that one energy. You know, you never know when that can happen. Like on this turn, for instance, there you go. Well, without any other options, we'll just take a headbutt initially. You know, there's a chance we can make something work here. Might need to rest though, but I also feel like going the very rough early path could be kind of fun. We're gonna heal. Pays for all the gold we just picked up and the little bit of damage we took on the previous room. Ice cream is very interesting though. You know, we can make a deck work with this very easily. Can we kill you? Eight? We'll take you down to eight, and this will deal. 12. It'll work. Actually dealt 13, which is something that I did not expect, but still, it worked. Dropkick, second wind, anger. Deal five damage if the enemy is vulnerable. Gain energy and draw one card. I feel like I can never really make that work, but if we could make it work with ice cream, it could be pretty good. Second wind, exhausting the cards is usually not what you want. And I just I just hate anger. I I don't, really don't want anger. Unless we can put in a um, unceasing top right now, I don't want it. So we are, we are weak, but one attack kills them anyways. Save the energy. 
Now we're frail, but now we're not weak. Love it. Good fight. Poison potion. And you know what? I think I love Shockwave. It's Shockwave is a good card. You know, if we draw it on this turn, we can play it. Save the energy. Next turn, we open up with a bash. Or a headbutt. Good enough. Headbutt bring back some uh, some attacking cards. And then he's gonna be weak for one more turn, so we don't necessarily need to put up a, a ton of block. Well, we could. I think I'm gonna let him hit me for 15, though. I'm gonna block this, though, because we, we have him before he uh, gets back around again. He might be dead on this turn, in fact. Not quite. But technically, due to, the, due to the poison, he is dead. Seeing reds. Seeing reds and any other sort of energy gen generation is something that we do want. I will take an evolve. It's not in flame, but you know what it is? It's protection against many different types of elites. Well, I'll hit you. Back a strike, I suppose. Try to take as little damage as possible as well. He's doing six. I will block your six, good sir. Say that I do know who that YouTuber is. I have heard of them before. Power through. With Evolve, you take power through. 100%. Even with Gremlin Knob, a power through might be worthwhile. Probably not, but it could be. Dude, you know, a shockwave, even though it gains him a little bit of strength, makes him weak for a long ass time. Now we have to kill him very quickly, but I think the weakness is super valuable. Actually, no. Didn't really want to bring back power through, but I wasn't paying attention to the discard pile. Maybe it's nice to bring back a power through, though. Yeah, take no damage two turns in a row. Then you kill the gremlin knob. I like it. Pocket watch is fine. Thunderclap cleave metallicize. Crowd control is important. Let's take a thunderclap. And there might be a small chance that we can... I don't care about Blue Candle. There might be a small chance that we can... Uh, like, get some of those cards that give you energy in a card draw when an enemy is vulnerable, and we have Bash, Thunderclap, Shockwave, we can make enemies vulnerable for a long time. So that is possible. Uh, we should do an upgrade. What are we gonna upgrade? Probably, honestly, Shockwave, because it's a card that we're going to be playing every time it comes around, because it's weak and vulnerable. It's not as good as an Uppercut, because Uppercut is damage, but it's good enough. Defend. Defend. I'm gonna do a Bash. There's a chance he's gonna block next turn, and there's a chance he's gonna do a large attack. I don't know what makes them do a large attack, what makes them do a, a block, but... You know, we blocked through it. Now we can focus entirely on attacking. Strike. Strike. Thunderclap. No reason to even play Evolve, because we're gonna have Pocket Watch. It's gonna draw us enough cards. Strike. Strike. Nice. We may have taken a little damage there, but not a lot. Not a lot. And I think at this point we will start going max HP. And I will go for the Burning Elite! I didn't expect Log of Ulan, but I'll take it. And we know how to, how to handle this. We gain energy, we don't hit him. Yeah, don't hit him. Why? Now that we have six energy saved up, Probably play the skill potion, and then we go to town. 
Well, we don't need it, but technically Rage is pretty good. You know what we could do? We could exhume and then play Shockwave again. Sure, why not? Then we'll go to town. Bash! Actually, that was a bash, that was a headbutt, but you know, same thing. Strike! 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 He's weak and vulnerable for basically forever. So we'll just put up some blocks and wait for him to get tired. <coughs> oh, excuse me. He's still hitting. And he has plus two strength, but we're hitting him back. We're also drawing a lot of cards every turn. He's actually going to have a chance to hit me, which is unfortunate. Ah, but we got power three, which is ideal. And we can bring power three back, which is ideal. We were actually draw. Oh, we should have definitely killed him. We were actually drawing like our whole hand every turn thanks to Pocket Watch. Which I never think of being a good relic, but it is actually pretty decent. So Wild Strike with Evolve is not that bad. But I'm actually just gonna take a Bludgeon. I, I need a big heavy hitting attack that can kill an enemy in one hit. And Bludgeon gets the job done. So like on the next turn we can kill either enemy. Should've probably even split the, the damage between them a little bit. But like, you know, Bludgeon, <laughs> if we want. Kinda, kinda wanna bludgeon him. Although, if we power through, can Thunderclap, Headbutt, and get them both in a position where they will die. I kinda like that better. We will draw enough cards to kill them both next turn in all likelihood. Yeah, Thunderclap and a couple strikes will get the job done. Good. Hmm. We don't need Clothesline for weakness. Cleave for crowd control could be good, but I'm just gonna take the max HP and we'll question mark. D absolutely, fight an elite. Oh no, it's a gremlin knob. And turn one, he's gonna buff like usual. Just freaking bludgeon him. I hate that he's doing a big attack, but we're gonna shockwave, power through. The weakness will pay for itself, and the vulnerability just means that it's easier for us to kill him. I'm gonna power through because I will use the fire potion to kill him on the next turn. Yeah, actually unnecessary. We get frozen egg, which is decent. A block potion, uh, we don't need card draw. It feels like we don't need card draw, anyways. Card draw? Card draw. Card draw. Card draw. And give me a, uh, give me a bludgeon. I think this is a pretty decent deck we've got for us ourselves here. It seems to be getting the job done. Now, we will not be able to split him Unless I use the potion, so we're gonna use the potion. Using a potion to get in front of this guy is fine by me. Now we, I would really, really like to have an energy relic. With ice cream, energy would be fantastic to have right now. That was one, that was two, don't take damage. Save the energy. We need to get through him on this turn anyways, which we can do in one card! There's the bludgeon. <laughs> I like it. What is the co-op thing anyways? Are you guys talking about Gungeon? Uh, the co-op thing in Gungeon is just... Uh, doing the uh, co-op character's alternate pa- or the co-op character's pass with the alternate costume unlocks a different starting gun, that's it. Such a- it's a my such a minor thing. It's an unimportant thing. 
Oh, there's the bludgeon, so you're dead. It's 126 damage. Uh, very glad I added in the bludgeon. In fact, give me Sneko. Oh, so close. You know what? We need the energy. I would like to upgrade more cards. Give me Sozu. It's pro honestly, it's probably one of the best relics you got, so let's just freaking do it, you know? Pull the Band-Aid off, take Sozu, no more potions, even though I love them and they can win you runs on their own. We'll just do it. We'll just freaking do it. Can't get Pen Nib. Shockwave doesn't do anything. We do have another Bludgeon coming up. And 74 damage is enough to kill him. So why don't we just bludgeon, defend. We'll take six and then heal six. Yeah, that seems really nice. You know what I want? Dude, give me Necronomicon right now. I would love Necronomicon. We could add in a third bludgeon. How about instead we'll go Pantograph Anchor. And we can still add in a bludgeon. Nah, it's actually much much more beneficial, I think, to remove strikes at this point. <laughs> Got a lot of stuff here. Uh, give me a relic. Bronze scales is fine. We don't need to go to the next shop. We have 38 gold. We'll go to a fight instead. I like this. You know? Anchor means that you can hold on to a uh, little bit of extra energy. You can put out a shockwave. Put out a bludgeon. There's 63 damage right there. And uh, next turn we're gonna get the other bludgeon, so don't play anything. And we'll try to get we'll try to get as close to pen nib as possible. Six, seven, eight, nine. So pen nib is active now. We don't need two evolves, game. Reckless charge is good. I, I my my favorite card that adds wounds or or uh, dazes is power through, and it's because it adds the cards to your hand, which mean, means they go into your discard, which means that you never have to deal with them if you play evolve first. But reckless charge, because it puts the card in your draw pile, you could draw that before you draw evolve. I don't like that as much. But because we have this weird, like, super high damage deck kind of going on right now, I feel like just letting the bludgeons do the work right now, you know? We'll put a block, we'll wait for the bludgeon to come around, and we'll just, you know, hit him for a butt ton of damage, why not? There's the bludgeon, I was waiting for you, it's 126 damage right there. I think a shrug is a good block, probably even worth upgrading. Do we want to upgrade that or bludgeon first? You know, give me the bludgeon. <laughs> and you know what? Give me the elite. Oh, it, this is the problem though, is that it's such overkill, but it does get the job done. Mmm, maybe this was a bad idea. He's summoning, good. I mean, a Thunderclap bludgeon on him is like 60 damage. It's not a kill. I thought it was gonna be a kill. It's okay, we can hit him on the next turn. We don't have any crowd control. I mean, Thunderclap is kind of our crowd control. Which we did get. I'm gonna Thunderclap, I'm gonna Bludgeon. I'll play the Block po- uh, let's save the Block Potion. It's our only potion. But in theory, we're gonna draw the uh, Bludgeon and kill the boss. So, I mean, maybe this was actually ideal. Seems a little wonky, but got the job done. Self-76 HP, Bag of Prep, fantastic. Whirlwind does work good with Ice Cream, but I kinda like holding on to the energy and playing Bludgeons. So, Let's just take the max HP. Just keep trying to get the max HP as high as possible. And we'll upgrade the uh, 
Good the shrug. Eleven block, why not? Yeah, it's been a pretty good pretty good floor so far. This gives us an option. Whenever you apply vulnerable, apply one week. Dude, thunderclap is now basically just a mini shockwave that also applies a little bit of damage. It's pretty nice. With 78 HP, I will do the elite, even though it is a book of, book of stabbing. I'm scared. Shrug. I don't like drawing both bludgeons, but, you know, in theory, with uh, stopwatch, we can play the bludgeons and, you know, get through this pretty quickly. And then honestly, give me the headbutt bludgeon, pennib is active, and that'll do like 120 some odd damage, I think. 129, 126 damage. I think we just flawlessed him and we got preserved insect. Something with this, something about this deck is just working and I love it. A thin deck with bludgeons. Can it work? Can we do it? Yo, that's pretty good. Let's go for the elite first, then a question mark. Okay, that'll apply weakness. I think I would like to play Evolve just to get it out there. Three cards means that Pocket Watch is active. You know, even with four energy, we're getting Pocket Watch on like every turn. I love it. I'd rather take no damage. And then honestly, Save our energy, save our pocket watch. Shockwave. And then because the shockwave lasts for so long, let's just do a little bit of targeted attacks. Keeping ourselves within pocket watch territory. You guys are talking about Steam summer sales in Factorio. I, I think Factorio is never going to have a sale, at least before they uh, release, which is kind of cool. I like that. It means there's no reason not to buy it now if you're interested in, in the game. Okay, try to get to Pen Nib. Evolve in Flame Metallicize. I mean, Metallicize for block is fine. It's not a lot of block, and it's not a block deck. Inflame for strength is fine. It's not really a strength deck either. This is a weird one. What do you do? I mean, what I'm thinking is because the bludgeons are the brunt of my attack, defense is king, and a metallicize for block every turn is not that bad. I don't know if that... Oh, we can't quite get pen nib. Well, we can probably draw the other bludgeon soon. I don't know if that actually makes sense or if that actually works, but maybe. You know, four block every turn, why not? Can't quite... get dependent, but we can do it uh, next turn with Bash Bludgeon, and it will definitely kill him. So let's do a Shock Wave. And then we'll just put a block. We're gonna take a little bit of damage, but dude, we're gonna be at like 80 plus HP for the boss fight. That's not a problem. In fact, we're gonna be at 90 something. I mean, we're just gonna do a Thunderclap into a Bludgeon, because of Pendib, it gets the kill. I like this deck. <laughs> Mummified Hand! Okay, well now we have a reason to add in the powers, because if we can make a power hit a bludgeon, we can play it for free. What's not to like about that? Do we want Ritual Dagger? I feel like it's a bit late, and I love gold. So we're going to skip the Ritual Dagger, and 
This deck is almost fully upgraded, which is awesome. We're going to make power through better. We're going to start removing cards in our shops. And, yo, we got a deck. We got a deck going. I don't want to play Shockwave, though, because I want to play Shockwave when I can actually bust down his uh, artifact protection, of course. So we'll play Blocks, and... Uh, Honestly, we should try to take no damage, or as little damage as possible. Wait, I still have energy. I had six energy that turn? That seems like I had too much energy, but it works. They're both gonna take cards. Am I okay with them taking cards? Probably. I don't think a vulnerable, vulnerability shockwave is going to kill anything on the next turn, but I want to play Metallicize and I want to play the Bludgeon. Right. Okay. Well. That worked. <laughs> Very nicely. Uh, hit you, and then might as well shrug. We're not going to get Pocket Watch, but we were able to play a Bludgeon for free. That's really nice. And he stole a Bludgeon. Well, I know how to get it back. One, two, three. Now, we didn't quite play the Shockwave in the ideal case scenario, but at least he's vulnerable for forever, which is good enough. So, Thunderclap. Give me a Bludgeon. Give me a Headbutt Bludgeon. We get Pennib next turn. Only four energy, but we're not gonna die to the Hyper Beam. Should we just play three blocks? No! Is the answer to that. We're gonna bludgeon him. We're gonna make him regret ever attacking us. We just, you know, if I can just get the deck down to bludgeon, headbutt. <laughs> we can just do bludgeon, headbutt, bludgeon, headbutt, bludgeon, headbutt. I, no. No, we already have two bludgeons. We don't need a third one. I will say, if we could get... If we could get... A Necronomicon, we would be so happy. So, Immolate is good, but, we, I mean, we got the bludgeons, man. The bludgeons are so nice. And I also think we can totally handle wounds, which means we can play more bludgeons. 376 gold. The only thing we need to worry about is the key. Let's make sure we don't forget about it this time. We can fight three elites. There's a late shop, but it bypasses three elites. So we'll go, um... I want to hit the shop, though. I want to hit the shop because I want to remove cards. Even though the question mark path is... Good, because if we get the right question mark, we can remove... Or no, not remove, we can get Necronomicon, but I don't know if you can get Necronomicon in just standard rooms like this. What I mean by that is, I don't know if we can get Necronomicon uh, on this floor. Not on the 35th floor, on the third act. I don't know, maybe. Anyways, Shockwave. Bludgeon. Headbutt. Not enough energy. That's fine. We'll be able to almost certainly draw a bludgeon. Well, maybe not almost certainly. But we'll draw ten cards at least. It wasn't a bludgeon. Well, then we block. And then we block. And then next turn we bludgeon. We'll have two bludgeons and eight energy. You die. You die. You're bashed. You're dead. Pommel Strike, Clothesline, Cleave. Pommel Strike is nice for the draw because we have kind of a expensive deck, but if all we play is like Bludgeon, Bludgeon, Shrug in a turn, then we're gonna draw enough cards to be able to play 
enough cards in the future turns anyways, you know? There are going to be some cases where we don't uh, we don't play three or less cards. We play like four cards or five cards, but then in the future we can just, you know, maybe shrug. Or maybe just delay, or maybe just play only three cards on the future turns. I don't think we need a Pommel Strike. I kind of just want to go max HP as hard as I can. Uh, no. I just said no, good. I think I said no. I said no. Go to... Give me the shop. Five energy. Did not make a bludgeon free. We're also on pen nib. Which I didn't even think about. But you know what we can do? Bring back a bludgeon. You know, because we're killing an enemy on the next turn, I will play the block to take zero damage. Technically, I don't think it mattered at all, but... You know, we drew enough cards anyways, and I'm happy with that. Now, I probably shouldn't have done that, because if we didn't do that, we maybe could have drawn another block on this turn, but... Whatever. Doesn't matter. He's dead. Dude, Ghostly Armor pre-upgraded is a good block. I'm gonna take it. So we're gonna Shockwave Bludgeon. <laughs> and if every turn we bludgeon, we win. Well, we can't on this turn, but we're taking no damage. Then we evolve, bludgeon. You know what? Bring back the bludgeon. You feel like this deck won't be able to beat the heart? I don't know. We, I think we've got a chance. I don't. I don't know if it's a good chance, but I feel like we've got a chance. Why not bash for three? I'm trying to play only three cards in a turn whenever possible. There was no no bludgeon. I'm trying to play only three cards per turn whenever possible because if we do that, then we don't need to worry about card draw in the deck. And there's no reason to play attacks against him when we're taking no damage. And we can also keep the energy moving forward. And, you know, we got considerations. Thunderclap is interesting because it is a uh, weakness, but because we have Shockwave and Bash already, I feel like it's not super necessary. It's going to take the max HP. 429 gold. Upgrade two random attacks. Bash, Thunderclap, Headbutt. I would like to get a more upgraded deck. Cannot take potions, unfortunately. Magnetism works against the idea of Pocket Watch. I don't think I'm going to take it. But I think a, a Whetstone plus card removal of a basic strike works. We're going to hit Elite Camp. Elite Camp. Elite. What are we going to do at those camps? Upgrade, upgrade, get the key, maybe rest. Maybe add in cards. Okay, I'm going to do it. We're going to whetstone, we're going to remove a basic strike, get these strikes out of here, and... Yeah. Just kind of keep going. I like it. I wouldn't use the eye. The eye that shows you your draw pile is nice, but I think it's unnecessary. I would play a bludgeon if we drew it, and we drew it, so I'll play it. It's 81 damage. Evolve. Bash. And honestly, I'll hit him for like another 50 damage by playing those strikes. <laughs> okay, what do we want? We want ghost, bludgeon, headbutt bludgeon. <laughs> And if we do attack, attack, bludgeon, the bludgeon will do double damage. So we probably want to do... Like a thunderclap, headbutt, 
bludgeon. It doesn't quite kill him, but he'll be dead on the next turn. This deck is really good at doing a lot of damage quickly with these bludgeons, I will admit. So I want to do it... Oh, no, we're still good. I want to do it like this so that we're closer to Pendib. We're at max HP. We have Omamori, which is almost worthless. True Grit can exhaust wounds and status cards. Can exhaust basic strikes. It's also good block, nine block. We don't need an iron wave. I don't think we need a second shock wave. One should be enough. I'm gonna take it. It's it's a decent card. And we <laughs> I guess we're going to upgrade Evolve. We're one card away from having a fully upgraded 20 card deck, which is not bad. Not bad. In fact, I'm thinking one camp, two question marks. One question mark, one camp. Ah, uh, we need to get the key and we'll do one more upgrade as well. Let's go this path. Why not? So, we don't need to headbutt the bludgeon, he's going to be intangible next turn. I'd much rather play like a power through, bludgeon, and then headbutt the power through. Now we need to play evolve because we upgraded it. We're going to draw more cards now. We metallicize, power through, and then we'll bash him for the next turn. And I don't care if ghostly armor gets exhausted on this turn. Um, because I want to, I want to keep the pocket watch. Six, seven, eight, nine, double damage, or... Thirteen, thirteen, sixty-three, which is... It's thirteen, thirteen, and sixty-three, that's only eighty-nine damage. So we need Pennib to actually kill him on this turn, which is unfortunate. I would have liked to have kept Pendib active so that we can use it on uh, another fight. Yo, Lantern! Very nice. Reaper! Unnecessary to an extreme degree. We don't need it. What are we gonna heal? We're gonna heal four? It's not a strength deck. Our attacks are bludgeons. Bag of marbles. Really good. Uh, let's honestly get the key now, so don't forget. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And, uh, sure. Panic button, bludgeon. We don't need a third bludgeon. We need to remove cards. We can't really remove too many cards. So, I mean, uh, I mean another bludgeon could be useful. Panic button, something else. Warcry, writhe. Infernal blade, I don't want to add that. Ha 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 ha. Glad I didn't add the card. Okay, we don't want to add in these cards. Panic Button could be interesting. It's a very high quality block, but we have no artifact protection. Bum, 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 bum. Kill you. Just hit you, honestly. We'll play Evolve. Uh, I mean, ideally, actually, the Evolve won't matter. Now, the Dazes, some of them will... Actually, all of them are going to go into the draw pile, so maybe an Evolve would have been nice, but I don't think it's super necessary. Especially when we can just, you know, bring back a Bludgeon next turn and bludgeon the crap out of these guys. This is, ju this is just Bludgeon the deck. Th that's the thing, it kind of is just bludgeon the deck, isn't it? What do you do in this deck? Oh, you, we, we play bludgeon. How do you kill enemies, though? Oh, we, I mean, I just play bludgeon. Does that do enough damage? When you play bludgeon, it does. Nah. Anger goes against the idea of pocket watch. Pommel strike. I mean, if we don't... If we don't play the pocket watch... Or if we don't play, you know, more than three cards, we can actually draw in the pocket watch. Just take the max HP. As high as it'll go. Two attacks and we'll have pen nib. One, two. That's 138 damage. Might as well hit you again, because that's the third attack. <laughs> more bludgeons! That's kind of what it feels like. Shockwave. Block. Headbutt. Bludgeon. Ha 
how can I not just bludgeon, bludgeon? <laughs> it cost us all of our energy, but who cares? We got another bludgeon. Can't actually kill him with this though, so we're probably gonna have to do like ghostly armor, uh, bludgeon, metallicize. Did I say metallicize? I meant uh, headbutt. I was thinking about the metallicize, and then I realized I could just bring back a bludgeon. I will add in another metallicize. <clears throat> yes. Oh, this is actually a good turn. I will say, we are um, weirdly adept at fighting the timekeeper here, because ideally we play less than three cards every turn. Strange. I accidentally pen nibbed him to death. <laughs> not that I'm complaining or anything. So, we have one card in the deck that's not upgraded. We have a fully upgraded deck. Fighting the timekeeper. Let's freaking go. Evolve we want. We'll play Ghostly. And I'll play Bludgeon. And I will take... I will take one damage. That doesn't matter to me. Who cares about one damage when we get three card draw and we prevent him from getting stronger? And again, what's the point of this deck? Oh, the point of this deck is uh, we play Bludgeon. Now, we don't have Bludgeon this turn, so we're probably just going to do like a Metallicize, Metallicize, Power Through. We've already played Evolve, so it doesn't matter that we add in the Wounds. And getting eight block per turn passively is really nice. There's our Bludgeon, so we're going to... Shockwave. We might play more than three cards this turn just for the block, by the way. In fact, we're probably going to. Yeah, almost certainly. So we'll bludgeon him. I'll play... I mean, we're only gonna take five damage? You know what? Hit me for five. Oh, minus one card draw. Ha ha ha, never mind. I got all the cards in my hand. It's working. We only took six damage in the fight so far. I don't care about perfecting the fight, but if we could leave this fight with a lot of HP, I'd be happy. If I headbutt him, he'll split next turn, but we will have access to two bludgeons. I don't want him to do anything on the next turn. I just want him to sit still. So I'm like, end turn. And now he's gonna do a block, which means I have two turns to smack the crap out of him. So there's a bludgeon, and there's a bludgeon, and then there's a, uh, a strike for damage output. We're gonna hope that we can draw a bludgeon next turn and maybe even kill him on, on the next turn before he has a chance of healing. We're weak, so it's not gonna work. Actually, wait a minute. Thunderclap, Bash, they will do... Actually, let's do Strike. Strike is 10, Bash is 11. It's 21 damage, he'll be at 105. This will do 94 damage. And this will do another seven. We can do 101 out of 106. We can do 101. Sorry, I... I... We, we can't kill him. We can't kill him. It's close, but we can't. Ah, that's very unfortunate. So let's think. I, I guess we just we just want to end turn. Next turn we can maybe uh, headbutt back a bludgeon or a thunderclap, apply the vulnerability and the weakness, then bludgeon him. Maybe with Pednib, put up a bunch of block. We'll play more than three cards on the next turn, but we can't kill him on this turn. 
Unless I ran the math wrong, which, you know, could have happened, but we have 17 and 18 energy. We can play all the cards we want now. So, bludgeon. No, I... Eesh. It's so weird, because I actually, I don't want to do anything. Like, I want to wait for a thunderclap bludgeon, you know? So I'm like, just trigger a wound? <laughs> We'll play a bludgeon for damage, and then we'll just end turn. Because I want to do thunderclap, bl uh, bludgeon, and then the bludgeon will happen on the pen nib. Even though we're weak, I think it's worth it. So thunderclap, then bludgeon, 94, and shrug. Then, honestly, just play. We'll take 13, and he'll die as soon as we draw another bludgeon. Which will happen, eventually. You know what we need in this deck? Dex. You know what we need for the next fight? Frickin' Panacea, or anything that gives us artifacts. That would be lovely. Anyways, bludgeon, headbutt, bludgeon, shrug, bludgeon. He's not dead. He's not quite dead. He'll he'll die as soon as he hits us once. We took there a very small amount of damage on the fight. That's that's a good boss fight. We did fifteen hundred and eighteen damage. Let's go, art or elites. We have a uh, freaking preserved insect. Hopefully we'll be able to deal with them. And now we have nothing to smith, so we're just gonna rest for three HP. No artifact protection, unfortunate. Do we need a power on turn one? No. Do we need double tap? Yes. Uh, yes. Double tap, bludgeon. Or mayhem. Mmm. How about you? Mayhem ruins pocket watch, but if you mayhem a bludgeon, <laughs> you're usually happy. Ooh, what do you what do you do here? Vyra is worthless. We don't care about one strength. It's a bludgeon deck. But do you take mayhem and then you try to mayhem in the bludgeons? You don't think mayhem is a good idea? It would basically ruin... Po it wouldn't basically ruin Pocket Watch. It would only ruin Pocket Watch in certain situations. But the mayhem could be extremely beneficial. What powers do we have? Evolve, metallicize, metallicize. We don't really need to make those innate, I don't think. We're not going to take the, the tornado. Take double tap. Unfortunately, we cannot upgrade double tap, but we could take it. And remove a card. No, we can, act, we can actually do both. We can take double tap remove or mayhem remove. Vira's, we don't need Vira. We don't care about one strength. We care, we care about pen nib. Double taps, bludgeons. But like, Mayhem Bludgeon is useful because you get the bludgeon for free. <laughs> um, This is such an interesting choice. It's upgraded, which I like. It's one energy for being able to play a card for free every turn. And you almost don't care what it is. If it's a block, it's block. If it's an attack, it's, a t it's an attack for free. We won't be able to get through the deck as quickly, but we're going to be playing a lot of blocks anyways because of the, the nature of the fight we're on. I'm going to take Mayhem. And we're going to remove remove a strike. Could be wrong. I don't know. Please be vulnerable. Oh, wait, right. This only applies it twice because of the whole thing. Gotcha. Anyways, evolve. Bludgeon. Probably Thunderclap or Bash or Shockwave Bludgeon on the next turn if we get lucky. I think we can kill the Slayer or the uh, Spire Spear on the right first. Or should we go for the one on the left first? They're going to have a lot of block. I'm going to go for the one on the left first because I'm going to put up a lot of block on this turn. Power through was free, so I'm just going to play it. 
You know, there's a chance if I get uh, Shockwave Bludgeon, I can kill the one on the left. We have to play... We don't have to play Shockwave. We could just play Thunderclap. So give me a Thunderclap. Shrug. If we defend, defend, mayhem, defend, metallicize, we have a 50-50 chance of, of uh, the Shockwave being free. Or if we turn around, it actually saves us a lot more. So let me do a defend, defend. No, actually we can make it free because of mayhem, it's a power. So we're gonna strike, mayhem, sh oh, right. <laughs> Did it slightly wrong. You know what, it's fine. We took eight damage, that's nothing. And there's our bludgeon anyways, so. Petanid bludgeon. Oh, it's so tempting to just kill the one on the right first. We'll have enough block to be relatively happy with things. Give me a defend, defend, metallicize, bash. Well, we're taking eight. We're still gonna be at 98 HP. She's a card to exhaust. I oh, don't need to defend. Okay. There's my bludgeon. There's another bludgeon for free. Gremlin Horn. Oh! Absolutely wonderful. The best uh, relic I've ever seen. Why even use strikes? Increment Pendid. This is a good turn, actually. Mayhem. Metallicize. I'll shrug to see what happens. Shockwave, yeah. I've already played four cards, might as well hit him. Increment Pen Nib. Now, what happens with Mayhem? What do we get? Anything. I don't care. Give me a card. Free Bludgeon. It's 47 damage, costs us like two. Who cares? Might as well put up the Block Potion. We need the Block. Might as well Thunderclap and Bash. Uh, I do think it's worth it because Beat of Death is only at one. It gets us closer to Pennib, and it keeps the vulnerability and the weakness up for as long as possible. He's doing 50 damage this turn. Uh, Void was played, I think, which is fine. Gets it out of the deck. Evolve, Metallicize, and then we'll just uh, play all of our blocks. Uh, 40 block, no, 38 block out of 50 when we're weak, frail, and vulnerable. That's really good! A free strike! It's 27 damage. It was a pen nib strike. It's fine. Bludgeon. Headbutt bludgeon. Bludgeon. We played four cards, technically because of the strike, but that's fine. Honestly, because of Evolve, Pocket Watch doesn't matter. We're, we're drawing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine cards in our hand whenever we draw you know, one or two wounds or burns. And we have a couple of wounds and burns in the deck. He added a few, we added a few ourselves. We, we don't need the draw, which is nice. So, we should shrug. Block, block. Technically taking no damage, so, you know, give me a bludgeon. 63. Still taking no damage. Do I want to save the energy? Yes, because we want to save the energy. I mean, we're actually going to take one damage. But we want to save the energy because we want to save the uh, energy for bludgeon. Bludgeon's our damage dealer. Take one. We got a bludgeon for free. It's an ideal world. Bludgeon? True grit? Might as well get rid of the burn. You know, don't keep it around. We're gonna take 13. Which is nothing. I wish we had a disarm, admittedly. Like this. Close to Pendim, not quite enough. 
Hey, Duckleston, thank you for the follow. 60 damage. Well, we're gonna live. And we're gonna deal 126 damage right now. Beat of death is at two. Can we kill him? 13, 13, 26, he'll die on us, or we could put up a lot of block. We only have two energy. How much block could we put up? I mean, we're not dead now, so we might as well just hit him and then let him die on thorns. You know, we can do, with two energy, we can deal 26 damage, he'll be on 13, and he'll die after five hits, which means he'll die way before we do. So, one, two, and there we go. Yo, bludgeon deck. <laughs> this is a great deck. Shockwave, power through, evolve, bludgeons. And then just some, some random block cards. That's all you need. Hell yes. The Ironclad Ascension level 11 victory has finally come and gone. We've done it. The hump has been... Climbed? <laughs> Climbed over? Our bottleneck has been cleared? 2,117. Heartbreaker Ascension. We perfected one of the bosses. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was the... Um... Was it the Automaton? The one with Hyper Beam? Can't remember. Dude, we've done it. Bludgeon deck. It just took Abe sacrificing the silent. <laughs> Hey, you know, I just needed to, to get that out of my system, you know? And we did it. Look at this deck. Other than Ascender's Bane, which cannot be upgraded, a fully upgraded deck. The only way this could have been better is if we had Necronomicon. Necronomicon would just destroy with this deck. But we had five energy, early ice cream, saving energy for the bludgeons, Pantograph as well, which was really nice. Oh, you know what? I didn't even think about that. We were at full HP for the boss fight, weren't we? Because even though we took some damage from the elites, we healed up. But two bludgeons. Blech. Absolutely wonderful. Evolve. Evolve plus power through meant that we could actually, you know, gain a lot of block and still be able to draw a full hand in future turns. Uh, pocket watch. Pocket watch. Excuse me. Was very useful with power through. Power through, bludgeon, headbutt, bring back the bludgeon, next turn draw nine cards or, or draw eight cards. But eventually, and we saw that after we bought Mayhem, we weren't able to really use Pocket Watch as effectively as we wanted to, but it didn't matter because thanks to an upgraded Evolve drawing two cards per status, we were able to draw a lot via power through, and especially on the heart fight, him adding, or the heart adding in a slime, a void, a burn, and a wound, and a, and a daze. It meant that we could just draw past them, so it didn't matter how many cards we were playing with Pocket Watch, we were drawing basically a full hand every turn. That was a great deck. I had a lot of fun with that. I do think that we could have had an even better deck, again, if we had Necronomicon, but if we also had the uh, Sneko. Because Sneko Eye meant that we could play cheap cards, save energy, and then by saving energy we could just play uh, more expensive cards in the future if we needed to. And then, you know, Pocket Watch, if we only play three cards we get a full hand in the future, a full ten card hand, which could be, you know, zeros or threes as far as card costs go. But, you know, even if we don't get Pocket Watch active, the... Sneko Eye Relic would at least make sure we're drawing seven cards a turn instead of five by default. Either way, great run. I think the Mayhem Edition, it did not screw us because of Evolve on the Heart Fight, going through the burns, going through the wounds, going through the statuses, and then drawing us cards. We had no problem with card draw. Great run. Anyways, for those of you on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, check me out on Twitch for when, for when I go live, support me on Twitch, Patreon, and Streamlabs, and I hope to see you here again for the next run of Slay the Spire.